Lewis Brooks, 28 years old, and I'm a social worker. First memory about my dad would be, ironically, I remember him picking me up next to a Christmas tree in a white tank top. He had a big afro. He was a cool dude. From what I remember, I was about maybe four or five years old. You know how you had those flashback memories? It's probably the first. Yeah. So Great. Christmas, around Christmas time, him having a big afro. My father was um, a construction worker, um, but he also ran numbers. <laughs> so it's like lottery, you know, when you pick up the lottery and stuff like that. Um, around was he when you were a kid? He was up until I was about five or six. And then he left. Like, no, no, from what, my, from what I understand. Uh, without any notice. So he left when I was six, or I was five or six. Wow. Um, emotions, uh, emptiness, um, resentment, um, abandonment, most of all. But <clears throat> I treat a lot of, that's, I treat a lot of, I look at my mom as my father, so that's what it brings. So that makes me love her that much more, if that makes sense. Outside of my mother would be definitely my my uncle that formed, helped form me into the man that I am today. Right. Uh, definitely, and he was more, he was my mother's younger brother. He was kind of like an older brother, but still had more of a authority, you know, authority than a brother. So I respected him in that way, and I also respected um, the steps that he took in his life. He was in college, he played college football, and those are the things I aspired to do, you know. Uh, he set a, a great example for me. He left at six. I don't know if you... I, he left at six, and um, I, I was a, a decent... I was a, I was, I was a city-known basketball player. I was pretty good. I had a couple um, colleges looking at me and things of that sort. Um, and then I was playing in this tournament back home. I don't know if you want me to go on. But I was playing at this tournament back home. I remember meeting my brother. My last time I saw my father when he dropped me off at my mother's house. This was around like five or six years old. He was younger than I was, so he was five, four. All right. Um, <clears throat> so anyhow, back to the basketball tournament. So I'm playing the game. I'm doing very well. We winning. Not knowing I'm playing against my brother. And, and, and call it, at halftime, they was like, man, you guys remind me of each other. And they was just pointing at it. And I was like... He does look like me. And then sometime, somehow after the game, basically, what it was, he was my younger brother. And we talked. And maybe a couple days later, because the, the park was in between my, between my father's house. My father, my father literally stayed 15 miles or 10 minutes away from me. And I grew up, you know, 10 years, 10 years without him, man. And, and it was strange. You know, to know he was that close to me. Um, I let it go. I let it go. And I, I, I got an opportunity to see my father before he passed on. And I built the relationship, you know, going up while I was in school. I would come back home from college and see him and, and, and take him out and, and things like that. So he was, a quite, he was a few years older than my mother. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I would be able to do things like that, take him out. He's, his, his health deteriorated, you know, throughout the years. I mean, through the five years that I, I got a chance to re, re, you know, re, rekindle our relationship. He told me he loved me several times, but now that I'm looking back, he never really explained to me what made him leave. Um, he would allude to it, you know, that was my mother pushing him away, but he never explained why he, why he moved away or even why he was that close to me and wouldn't, you know, reach out to me. My name was in the papers. You know, my, my uncle, it, they, he knew where I was. My mother didn't know where he was, but he knew where we were, so. So if, if he was here now, then what would you say to him? Uh, that, I, that I love him? And I forgive him for, you know, walking out on. I forgive him for the things he's he's done to me and and caused my mother 
to have to go through financially, things of that sort. But um, I kind of did the last thing. <laughs> it was kind of my thing. He asked me to come see him right before I left to go. I was on school break. You know how it is. Come home for a school break. You only have a few days. You have a lot of friends. I'm used to coming home to see him. But this last day, he asked me to come see him. And I was trying to rush back to school. I had to drive back to school. I went to school in Ohio. And um, I didn't make it. Like that next day when I got home from school, my, you know, home from class, it was around 5 or 6 o'clock, my mother called me. And she told me you know, that my father had passed on. So I carry a lot, around a lot of guilt for not being able, you know, to grant his last wish. That might have been him telling me, you know, goodbye. That might have been him, you know. You know, I, I just carry a lot of, around a lot of stuff for that, for that reason, you know. If you wanted him to say one thing, what would it be? He's proud of me. He's proud of me. So, are you gonna have kids? Yeah, yeah, I plan on, I plan on having kids. I just got married. Um, my wife was talking to me about kids. I'm, I'm a newlywed. I not just got married. I just got married a year ago. My anniversary is coming up, <clears throat> but I do plan on having kids. Um, family first. Being honest, um, really, yeah. There's no reason I don't. I don't understand how you walk out on. A, you can walk out on a marriage. You know, you can walk out on a wife that gets on your nerves. But how do you walk out on an innocent child, healthy, you know, promising child? So like, how could you do that? So I would never. I would instill in him to be the man that I would teach him and, and groom him to be. And that's respectful and, and, and put your family first. It brings up a lot of old things. You know, I'm away from home right now. I don't have to deal with it. My mother is all I need, to be honest with you. My mother is, you know, everybody loves their mom, but my mother's all I need. So when I, when I, when I read this, I was like, you know what? It's going to bring up a lot of emotions, but <clears throat> if I can get across that, or hopefully that one day I can be a better father to my son or my daughter, or even to my goddaughter, um, I would I would like to be like my mother, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Lewis Brooks, I'm 28 years old, I'm from Chicago, Illinois.